Hello. So yeah, did not get to clean them in the mail today. Sadly. USPS is failing me. Not Thursday. 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 I get Saturday, no mail Sunday. Oh no, not Monday either, so. Hopefully tomorrow. But I get my hopes up. Um, it does mean we can't really start anything too long, so. I'm gonna do some more short ship. Animans, I was waiting all day today. I didn't want to start anything, and then the mail shows up early. I'd like to stay up and wake up a little later just to have the mail, but. I might have work at a random day this week. <laughs> I don't work either, so... I'm gonna have to get some stuff done during the morning till we get it. But anyways, we're doing Beacon Pines. Um, five to six hour game, I think, something like that. Um, it's a cutesy, slightly creepy, um, point and click game. A lot of dialogue. Where I think you use different words and stuff within a storybook um, to kind of get different routes and outcomes and shit like that. Um, so maybe a little like that one game we played. Uh, I don't remember the name. It was not very good. <laughs> it was written by the person who did the Uncharted 3 story, or the, or the lady. Um, or use different words and, and and stuff like that to kind of act on the world and do spells. And I was told through a storybook, and you were like a, a young chick, magician apprentice. I, I don't know. Point is, it had word-based gameplay. Um, I also played a game, but I also don't remember the name. <laughs> remember the name of these games because we'll play them in like two hours, and then yeah, that'll be it. They'll be pretty short. Uh, another game I played where. You would put in different verbs. You would go through a story and discover a verb or a noun and place them back in certain areas of the story and it would change them. It was a pretty novel little game. I wish I could remember what it was. I looked through my games last year, the year before that we could find it. Oh, I let the stream warm up. I guess I will. Because it's important information, I think. Year. Not before last year, really. Not Elijah. But it is something kind of like that. Name wise. Oh, these yeah, before all this. It would just be good to remember these for reference. Bacon pines. Yo, me. Yo, me. Hopefully this is a comfy game. I'm gonna use controller and unparalleled. Because during that big uh, blast of like ten zillion indies we did on um, the humble gift thing. Was a tiny echo one of them? Nope. Yeah, now I'm just letting the stream warm up. I'm trying to remember some names of some games that do a similar thing as this. I just don't remember the name of. They weren't very standout. Fate of Kai. I think that was one of them. Yeah, so Fate of Kai was a game um, where you're essentially going through like a like a graphic adventure, like a comic book or something. You grab different words and you put them back into the story and it changes them. Well, so this is kind of similar, I guess, you know. I 
trying to think of some games that had similar concept. I don't even know if that's how the concept might be in this, but anyways. I think we've probably blabbered it all on and off here. I go out with my brother to get some food later. Well, we should get through the meat of this. Let's go ahead and get started. It's supposed to be pretty good. Reader. Came out last year. Allow me to introduce you to my book. Though it might at first appear like many books you've come across, it is far from ordinary. You may, therefore, have some misunderstandings about its nature. Is it lost words? They're like the space beyond the page or something? It's lost words. Yeah, lost words beyond the page. Yeah, I wasn't big into that one. I think it was... Well, it told uh, a story that was definitely emotional or trying to be emotional. I just think that the gameplay was the chore. The pace was kind of meh. It just really didn't connect with most of what's going on. <clears throat> it was very just kind of typical to the uh, cinematic platformer trying to tug at your heartstrings in kind of a generic way, but the gimmick that doesn't quite work out. The story that awaits you has not been fully told. But it's kind of like this where it's got like a like a narrator going over it. I think it's the player. In fact, its conclusion it's is not yet story, known. Some of it's even cool. to myself. It is in that way that my book is special. It is in that way that you are special. Without you, there is no story. Chapter one. Sounds like the jackass opener. Bam, bam, boom, bam, 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 bam. Normal <laughs> like guitar fucking chord there. Bam, bam, bam. This is a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, the young boy walks alone at dawn. His name is Luca Van Horn, and like you, dear reader, he's here for a reason. Am I here for a reason, or am I just stumbling through, man? Jumpy. It looks nice. My god, it's not fully voiced. Her voice was fine though. Oh, I might turn down a little bit. Not by much though. Rollo was Luca's closest friend. He possessed many fine qualities, but subtlety was not one of them. the tears welling in his friend's eyes and the flowers on the grave. He's missing. <laughs> you fat bastard, do you have any tact? No. Jesus, son. about you from the moment you opened my book. Is this the third or fourth, like, fairy tale narrative theme thing I've played this year? <laughs> like, what a few, huh? That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Popular deal. I, guess, I mean, it's a good style. 
classic. Keep hold of it for now. Its purpose will reveal itself soon enough. Rollo looked to the side suspiciously. They, uh, CIA brother. Oh, I'm sure we'll be having to forgive you for an interlude every fuck couple minutes. Remember that charm you found in the dandelion patch? There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. They've been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Some of them can be found in this very house. It would be nice if it's like an exploration thing instead of just pounding. Gran had moved in, the house was more peaceful, more orderly, and more covered in flowery fabric. Oh, she likes floral patterns. She's a grandma. One of his so. father's old stethoscopes, Luca had spent countless hours listening to anything and everything with it. Not for years, though. Slid right off, man. Grant had already lit the fire. She kept a warm house, as if by grandmotherly obligation. Keep your books right next to the fire, and then walk away. Shit. Ballsy. Grant doesn't fuck around, dude. Oh my! This is quite exciting! I am now certain that you are the one I've been waiting for all these years. You'll recall I was a bit coy regarding the use of charms earlier. Excuse me, I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. You are about to encounter your first turning point. There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. This feels oddly, like, muted, but it goes pretty high on the mixer. I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit, but if you guys have issues, let me know. Step forth, dear reader. On the other hand, I suppose there's no reason to rush things. Gran will be waiting when you return. An array of prepared meals crowded the refrigerator, each labeled with the day of the week. I also don't think I needed to narrate everything. Dull scissors, a broken can opener, a most... Yolk. If it seems big or important, I will, but I don't need the everything The only here. piece of furniture Gran had brought... Unless you guys would prefer that. I mean, it's probably better for, for watching. Mind. It's not that much time. Luca paused at his parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. Thing is, it's not all going to be voiced anyways. Gran had commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief. Nobody actually was want to stay abreast of what's going on. You kind of have to watch. We got a lot of different stuff. I wonder just how much variance there is to what the turning Luca points are. on his favorite old sweater. Even though it was the first day of summer, a chill still hung in the air. <laughs> oh, fucking Grand's moving in meant that most of Luca's things had been crammed in the corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed by the situation. Yeah, I'm glad Grandma just took over, man. Gran's bed was undisturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. He's a reader. 
Well, we have quite a few things. Are a lot of these going to be just like filler? A sturdy old wheelbarrow. I just skip Young around. Luca would spend hours hiding in the bushes, waiting for a chance to jump out and startle his mother. She always enjoyed humoring him by feigning terror. A beginner's guide to gardening laid open on the bench. Just trying to keep up with what his mother started. The less grand new, the better for everyone involved. We're just gonna go chill for the day. Sounds like the best thing. We were just gonna go chill for the day. We're chilling, Grandma. Don't you get it? The best lies are built on truth. Looks like an old fortune teller or something. Maybe she is. We're chilling, Grandma. We're gonna go play fucking like Smash Brothers on the N64. Easy. Impressive. You've managed to navigate your first turning point without too much of a mess. Are these branches or are they fail states? That's the big question. Considering the game is an insanely long, I can imagine it's probably. We'll see. That is the power of charms. A single word can change everything. I think it's time to introduce you to the Chronicle. <clears throat> the Chronicle. The Chronicle is a record of the decisions you've made. Oh shit. Low chart. You can see the turning point which has been revealed. At any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. Luckily for oh. us, this is the one and only turning point where the charms won't dramatically alter fate. Oh. I it's see. the perfect opportunity to experiment with rewriting things. Ponder. We were just gonna go ponder for the day. We're thinkers. This was Luca's chance to sell his alibi. Nailed it. <laughs> Medium pondering. <laughs> Change on here. They can't just use anything. We were just gonna go hide for the day. Traditionally, when one is trying to hide something, <laughs> all's well that ends well. Looks like Grandma's okay with whatever, man. Well, this will be cute. I wonder if you have to get everything changed or if you just can kind of pick your ending. Because traditionally, most fans, you kind of want to hit like everything. Right? I don't know if, that's, if they're going for that or something else. We Feeling were just like chilling. Go chill for the day. The best <coughs> lies are built on truth. We like fast forward dialogue. Oh, it's one of those actually decent games that starts with not max volume. Shocking. Easy. It's 
rare. It's really rare you see that. It's usually everything's like defaulted to Mac. Trouble. I'm a fucking brat. Jesus, son. For a town that saw few visitors, the welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary. Like his little skipping, man. Secret. Chapter 2 Welcome to Beacon Pines For many years, this valley had been a small mining I'll turn outpost Turn a little bit oh, Of course, it's, it's always a small town full of miners The old mine have a secret in it Or is the company, did it ruin the, the town? <laughs> we'll see it wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon Pines was established. The gold beanie. Let's hope it's... I mean, I don't mind, like, if some anti-company thing or whatever. It's like a backdrop, but that is not just fuck. Over the next 30 years, the town had grown and prospered. That seems like it was a good thing. Until the foul harvest and his sudden death. In the six years since, everyone was simply trying to get by. The foul harvest. Hey buddy, I'm gonna knock him over. The road leading to Beacon Pines was long and uninspiring. A sort of natural barrier for the impatient. Impatient. Hurry the fuck up. William Kerr. Make a sweater CEO change though. Like if you change his sweater, it's actually different in the art. It's like a comfy ass sweater. Though. He had become a fixture around town over the past few years. After the failing of Valentine fertilizer, the town was hungry to welcome a new source of employment. It's like a hyena. Valentine oh, was not busy. <laughs> Flustered, Gus instinctively loosened his tie. He's clearly pretty casual, huh? like a cool place to stand and look look chill man yeah i'm chill problem a little like reindeer dude i do like that exploring is within the, the kind of core focus of the game here because you need words and shit kind of goads the player and kind of get more invested in everything Everybody learn about shit or discover more choices. Mr. I guess. Sinclair continued snoring and lifted one eyelid just enough to see who it was. A tactic he often used to avoid undesirable conversation. To have a good view. Was his turn? Ass bastard. What 
Yeah, she is yes man. <laughs> DC Douglas is a CRPG party member. I'm going insane. With jubilance. What are you playing? Yeah, I'd be using DC Douglas on principle. Oh, Tyranny? I thought about doing that one at some point and passed it up when it was on Game Pass. Maybe I'd come back, but I still haven't done some of the old Obsidian ones, like... <clears throat> Pillars of Eternity and all that shit. So. You like it so far? Yeah, maybe I should have gave it a try when it was on Game Pass, but... I can always try it again later. Some other means. Buy it or something. He pulled a pen from the pocket of his sweater vest and began to frantically jot something down on a clipboard. Pete. the town. he stopped scribbling and glanced up from the clipboard. Writes down everything he says. What the fuck? I don't know if that was the wind or something. The last thing I need is another fucking maintenance visit. Jetson. Whenever Luca saw his dad's chair by the pond, it reminded him of the days they'd pack up a couple of sandwiches and fish until sundown. Oh. Luca opened the tackle box and picked the perfect bait. Luca tied a Jump. shoestring to the hook. What fish could resist a nice shoestring? I guess I'm gonna get something better. What fish? Luca tied. What fish could? Yeah, I'll ease off it a bit. Ooh. 
Luca gently baited a feather onto the hook. Good for skimming the surface. So we just bring different things here and we could amass a collection. Rubber ducky. Memory lane here. Do we just have to like come back to see these? Guess so. Mission control. Let's take my glasses on. Yeah, speaking of CRPGs though, yeah, I gotta play a lot more of the classics too. That's another reason I think I passed Centurion as like, man, I haven't played all the Obsidian shit before that, and I haven't done like all out and then Baldur's too. Just like Planescape. I'm like, fuck, I feel like I should do those first. But... There's so many nowadays. The boys had a good thing going. As long as they kept old Jeff happy, they had an endless source of precious materials to add to the well, treasure. Why though? Knowing DC Douglas is in turn is definitely more of a sell. <laughs> It'll be fun for the stream. Rolo became obsessed with them building their own Hank Atomic Star Scraper. It was some time before Luca realized it was Rolo's way of keeping him occupied. On certain nights, when the clouds were just right, the boys could tune into strange patterns of static. Why is the mother missing? Ever. This is class. It's cleaning cloths has been used like a thousand times. When you run it through the wash, like, I think this detergent and stuff kind of gets lost on them. And they don't clean very well then either. You should really need like new ones. thinks it's aliens. He always thinks it's aliens. Maybe he's right. So we're gonna 
check out the glowing factory at night. Lucas winter coat decommissioned for the summer. With the cold holding out longer than usual, he reconsidered its usefulness. Not enough to wear it. See the morning regulars nestled in their booths at the early bean. Miss Hatch could often be found near the fountain, too absorbed in a book to be distracted. Was she reading the book of the game? Would not be surprised. ran the local paper of record, the Beacon Beacon. Change. Alrighty. There's a lot of places to go. We'll be back to a lot of these places pretty often. Little boring fuck. First time where your charms will change the course of fate. And currently, we only have one suitable charm at our disposal. Have no fear, we can always return later using the Chronicle once we find more charms. Well, now I'm just rambling. Where were we? Brother. Let's roll out her brother. He's done. Chop. Uh. He's over, man. You're done. as Roxy took a step toward him, oh. cracking her knuckles. I beat the shit out of this guy. <laughs> had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. To be a little chill. <laughs> In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. Come on.
He puts his arm against the wall. <laughs> Didn't quite work out. <clears throat> his arm's still against the wall now while he's hitting on it. It's a fucking player. Dawn had dreams of becoming a big time reporter. At night, she searched for the story that could be her big break. By day, she hawked papers at the newsstand. Investigator, Night Stalker. If they ever tell you how to find some of these, or like if there's one in an area or something. I wonder if I could like chill in one of the seats long enough for him to like fall asleep. Get something like that. It's fun with ones where you get, or not ones, but in games where there's like an object like waiting and you don't know. And there's no precedent. It's like that arbitrary amount of time is kind of important. Whether most people are gonna find something or not. This game's pretty cute so far. Chill. Let's see where it goes. And how much the story changed. I hope it's kind of like what we were talking about here in Citizen Sleeper, where <clears throat> it's a small story, but with lots of big changes. Because, like, a long story that things change in a, a massive way, like maybe they would in reality or something, right? <clears throat> would be a lot to develop, <clears throat> depending on the kinds of changes it is. Like, you don't see it as often. But something smaller could be more manageable, I suppose. Really, smack isn't what they want. A bit much, if you ask me. Indulgent. Well, I might as well just keep going. I sound like a VM, just keep rocking. Jeff's hardware closed down about a year ago. The effects of the foul harvest stretched wide. When there are no crops in the field, tractors don't need fixing. <clears throat> like how the background's got a bit more of an overcast. Wish I had overcast all day, man. Love me some overcast weather and some, uh, some rain. I'd have that window open all the time. Mm -hmm. 
Shows me that dance. Is this dude a creep? Or is he just hitting on her? A promise Gran regretted the second it was made. She's a fine woman, that Juniper. <laughs> She's pretty cool, I guess. Why the fuck is this guy talking to this 12 year old? And how fine his grandma is. A real fine one. Sweeter than any jam on earth. Base. <laughs> He's got away with words, man. The phone booth was brand new. Part of Perennial Harvest's Beacon Pines Damn Reborn fine. initiative. It didn't see much use. That'd be a problem with small town, man. You get any, like, a weird romance that's one sided and it's gonna get awkward as <laughs> fuck. You can't just, like, disappear, right? For us, all that shit. The overcast. Luca peeked up at the beehive. It appeared to be deserted. No bugs at all. I do always like that small town, a like rural town where like it's just enough surreal shit going on. And then it builds into something a little crazier. The path led into a small hollow at the edge of Weepwood. The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. Luca often asked himself what Rolla would do. Oh, he sneaked by, man. He could rule out that option. As sparks flew from the fence, the light atop that section shut off. Two bulbs remained. See. Oh, yeah. One more to go. Luca knew that if he gave up... But I wanted to go check the other place. The fence's buzzing gave way to silence. It's done. Every kid in town knew the old Valentine Fertilizer building. Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. Mom. Now, it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed strange signs of life. There was only one way to find out. Harvest destroyed their wealth and reputation. The Valentines shuttered off their estate from the rest of town. Really? The Valentine Mansion will be finding them soon. Over every other building in town. Maybe they're a fault here. Figuratively and literally. They'll show up here eventually. They didn't just draw all this for nothing. Hello. How goes it, buddy? Oh, 
жизнь. Дабл Д. Дабл Д. Oh, today and tomorrow. Well, hopefully it's uneventful like it's been before. Anything you're doing on the downtime? Some editing? <laughs> Keep you entertained at work? It floats slowly into the woods. The hose emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of liquid. Death liquid. Oh, you did. Bit of the Zelda. You liking that pretty well? I'm disappointed I didn't get it today, but I'm enjoying this so far. Luca thought he heard faint sounds coming from the other side of the door. He pressed his ear against the cold metal to hear better. Yeah, I think I'll enjoy it. I'm hoping to get it tomorrow. And then not be busy, but yeah. The sound of footsteps grew louder. Oh. oh. Shit. Heavy steel door knocked Luca to the ground. It's a cutesy game, but I guess it's not as cute as it seems, which is good with me. Disoriented, he looked up to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. It lunged toward him. He tried to scramble away, but felt a gloved hand latch onto his ankle. Luca watched his fingernails leave so. trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door, into the lab, into the green light. A story about change. This is a story about change. It was far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself. But change is, after all, a dangerous animal. The end? I probably should have warned you about this. There are many paths that our story can take. Most will end in tragedy. But don't let that discourage you. The end bad ends here. <laughs> I know two of me. We will find the ending that the story deserves. I just know it. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Now, let's try something different. I'm gonna try shit. What is he gonna shit his pants so that you'll run away? Must <laughs> to be oh, it's to be a little shit. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little shit. What the? He just walked up and smacked her. What a fucking asshole! <laughs> Oh, crass. <laughs> oh, geez, sir. Solomon Valentine. Current ward of and future successor to the Valentine fortune. Huffed as he brushed off his pants. This 
this a kid or just a really short dude? <clears throat> Solomon trifled a gesture toward the approaching heiress, Valentine. Strolls are for commoners. Strolls are for the weak. Weak of mind. Great pass. I'm with a great future. Let's down each ship. Three last time. I As guess the they shortened it. Of the old warehouse came into view, On repeats. Rolo began to bounce oh, cool. excitedly. Oh, it's a question mark because there's more down that branch. Okay, so I think it's gonna be a lot like tighter of a. Let's say, right? There'll be a lot of choices. It's good to have them be like important, but not every little thing needs to be a choice. I mean, this is just a lot like a VN or something, but a bit more of a um, more of a visual, like adventure kind of reward for choices because you need to find the choices. I like it better than Last Words so far. Just did a similar thing, and probably better than a. Uh, Another one I mentioned. <laughs> I already forgot the name of. Fate of Kai. That one wasn't too bad though. Maybe this kid's gonna get killed this time. I like the little photos though. Cute, funny, the smack. Because what this good? How is he so large when he's so hyperactive here? Must be eating good. in the fucking sludge hazardous material like dumpster. Yeah, they look real clean. Yeah. 
Could have been in a VLR suit, man. I'm not holding her. <laughs> All right, well the games have been wearing. It goes a little bit harder than I thought. It's good. Got this dude's fucking hand here. footsteps as he ran one two three he and they just both run at the, the same wall, time straining to hear rollo's footsteps as they so think the guy's gonna come back out right after he's do something well oh, maybe throw away more 15 16 35 36 screw it that's long enough luca carefully lifted the lid and peered out nothing no sign of rollo no sign of the man in the yellow suit time to haul ass luca clambered from the dumpster stumbling to his knees he was up like a shot and running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. Beacon Pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled up in his eyes. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night. Throwing his front door open, storming up the stairs to his room and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as he hit his pillow. He's full of sludge and court feet. Chapter 3 Finding a Friend the next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. Brow furrowed. Bacon pains. The second bacon joke. Last hour. She let out a long sigh. Her voice was quiet and even. <laughs> somehow in on him.
A faint electronic sound floated in the air. If I left it open again. <laughs> Sons of bitches and your bacon buns. Anything new out here? Thank you, bang. Much obliged. Just fall asleep. Maybe the sleep option. Descriptive verbs or some sound being heard. Like, oh, the sound echoed. I'm going to think about it on the fly. <laughs> Resonated, I mean, you could say the sound resonated or something, or, or shook you, sound shook, the sound hummed, you know, it just kind of depends on the context, right? Like the sound awoke or something, I mean, awoke would be like, I guess, acting on someone. Sound reverberated, sound exploded. It could be like, you know, could startle. be hung, like the sound hung in the air, or, you know, like ominously or some shit. Oh, spooky. Luca glanced at the now silent walkie-talkie. He wasn't sure what to think. Yeah, I think it just depends on the context. But yeah. I mean, I wouldn't use many in like normal speech, but yeah, for writing, obviously, there's quite a few you could do. It depends. Yeah, on the fly, it's hard, but I mean, I, I think if you just think about other writing, some will come to you. Tomorrow, hopefully. I mean, it 
Depends on the USPS. I mean, the worst I've ever had was like two weeks, but that's pretty damn rare. Usually, like tomorrow, if it was after tomorrow, I'd be like, come on. After Wednesday, it'd be pretty annoying. Yeah. Hopefully tomorrow. That was the bad luck option. Really bad luck would be after that. That'd be kind of ridiculous. Because it was sent on a Thursday. First class mail, so... <laughs> Luca's mouth felt dry. Luca could feel his heart beating in his throat. Interesting. We got the other end of that walkie-talkie, and it's like a creepy thing. I like that, though. You get the walkie-talkie, and the person who's supposed to have it goes missing. Beacon pain. Twin Peaks. <laughs> I love it. Small town that gets weird. But that's not the first thing to do. Go back this way. at some point. Oh, this kid's skipping around after his friend disappeared. That gives me tracking numbers. There's not really like a a go between with me and like the post. It's just raw through gameplay. I think all that's handled on their end. I'm usually not too worried about it. Only these big ones. Just based on your address? Hmm. Where would you do that at? The USPS's website? US Postal Service. Informed delivery. Sign up for free. Cool if I could go pick it up myself. That's possible. Yeah, that'd be useful.
So I have to make an account or whatever. Thanks for filling me in on this. Yeah, that's useful. I'm playing my games a little better. If I could expect stuff a bit better. We'll see if it worked out here. Questions. I mean, yeah. Communications from USPS and our partners. Partner? I guess I'd want to do that. I don't know what their partners are. But... So will they just tell you what's going to be coming at some point or just what what you got? Should arrive, okay.
Unable to verify your identity online. Is it because I just made an account or something? Identifier guys may go to look for us. Request an invitation could be a first class mail. I just want to do it online, dude. Maybe because I just made an account with USPS. They don't have me in the databank yet, so I can't verify my identity. It's weird because I'm just like logged in as myself, so I don't know why I have to verify <laughs> while I'm already here. It's bizarre. Yeah, weird. Unless it's like cross-referencing it with like... Like actual like government record. I mean, I should be on this, I, on this fucking lease, so. Yeah. I mean, I am on this lease. <laughs> I mean, it definitely would be, uh, fine. Phone number's right. I'll try again in a bit. Yeah, thanks for them for the all. I'll try it again in a bit. It might just need to like have a few hours because it's some random government site. Probably, they probably don't care about updating the records very quickly. Since I just made the account, I probably like maybe can't cross reference the database because I'm not in there officially yet. I have no idea. That doesn't make much sense, but. <clears throat> It'd be cool to know. Yeah, do you know if you can just like... Like see what's supposed to be coming and just like kind of grab... Luca stuck a toy stretchy hand onto the hook. And go pick it up earlier or something. Those things always get dirty anyway. I don't know if they just show it to you like... As it's in the store, or as they're going to like put it in their truck or something. As if it, I wouldn't be surprised if they ever had it like at this fucking like shop or whatever, but like just they didn't take it out to deliver it till a couple days later. I can keep collecting stuff. Gotcha. This would definitely be nice. I would like to have more info about when I'm gonna get shit and when I'm not.
Yeah, I feel like she's reading the book of this game. It's like prop it's got like propaganda music in the back. She's gonna disappear, man. Somebody's gonna disappear. Sally Seashore's simple succulent sundries. Luca brushed off a smudge of dust. Or 30 recipes so easy you'll doubt it's even edible. Oculent. A peek behind the curtain. The methods and ruminations of Patrick C. Montesquieu. One of the greatest acting minds of our time. By Patrick C. Montesquieu. Oh, the oh, cobs man. I've eaten. A salad-centric travel guide for the mildly adventurous. There were rarely any actual new additions, simply a variety of existing content rotated into the front display each week. Phosphorescence. The bottom corner shelf was a dusty array of thick science books. Only one binding was clean enough to read Cellular Biology and the Chemistry of Mitosis. Mitosis. Okay. 
are kind of looking at this. Yeah, the top words. Level of the library was devoted to comics, most of which were Hank Atomic and the myriad of lesser revered spin offs. Damn, Hank Atomic, that popular. Like a third of this place dedicated to it. Kato volunteered at the library during the summers. He wasn't very social, so the he killer, dedicated man. each summer to becoming Make an expert conspiracy. in a single subject. Making him a reliable source of very particular knowledge. If you were to ask Kato something he didn't know, he'd escape into the dusty old bookshelves and return with just the right thing. Kato was lost in his reading. Luca crooked his neck to see the title. Introduction to Melatology. Penguin motherfucker, dude. He gestured to the shelves. giving her little time to establish any real connections. She would tell you she prefers it that way. Luca shifted his feet uncomfortably. Beck pulled a coin from her pocket. Lucky penny. Uh, Superstitious bullshit at least. Guess they're bored as fuck. Friend's been kidnapped or something supernatural. Nah, I guess I'd be spirited away. We're gonna go skip around and have fun. After the foul harvest destroyed, the Valentines shuttered off their estate. The Valentine both figurative. Mm, I've already seen all this. I'm exploring around to see if there's like bonus shit, but I feel like I should just stay on track. <laughs> I got the fucking Tears of the Kingdom in. Not here. Not down here in old Arkansas. Sons of bitches. Well, I'm not in a big city. I'm not special enough. Get my mail in a, in a timely manner. Lovely, 
lesser variety of people. The Midwesterners. a chill as he approached Beck. Her eyes were locked on the strange green liquid. The nearby grass was coated in a fine layer of frost. Luca watched as Beck dipped a broken tree branch into the goo. Beck's eyes widened what as the? flowers grew from the dead wood. Are the Valentines trying to bring back the guy who died because they're obsessed? They're experimenting on people or something? First small buds, which quickly bloomed into vibrant petals. As quickly as they had grown, the flowers began to shrivel and turn gray. Beck dropped the stick with a grunt of disgust. Iggy took a step towards Luca, his sneer lit by the glowing puddle. Throw him in the puddle, dude. Beck could see tears welling in Luca's eyes, his fists clenched. Some things about Beacon Pines were very different from the city, but a bully from a hayseed town is really no different from a city bully. Beck took a deep breath and thought. Bust out the strange. Well, time to bust out the strange. Beck stared in silence, the only sign of life being the twitch of an eye. He's so kind of wackadoo. At the sight of Iggy taunting Beck, something in Luca snapped. Iggy smirk shifted to a look of shock as Luca launched himself into his stomach. Iggy's clothes were drenched in the glowing ooze. Iggy's voice began to slur as he struggled to get up. I don't feel so good. Holy. Yep, with the question mark. Is he gonna be like half old? <laughs> half young or something? Heavy. Hey man, he got what he deserved, dude. You fuck around, man, you're gonna find out what's up, dude. <laughs> it's your, your life, apparently. The person at the warehouse, the strange ooze, and what it did to Iggy. Was Rolo caught up in all of this? the strain to see what happens. Why would the hyena person be here? Person seems suspicious. The smile. As 
this person out here in the woods. There's so many people in the woods. Beck glanced toward Luca. Rolo was safe. But we haven't seen A wave that. of relief washed over Luca. Which was quickly replaced by a sense of dread. Gran is going to kill me. If he hurried, he might just make it home before sundown. Chapter 4. Our harvest awaits. Luca took a deep breath and gingerly opened the door, steeling himself for Gran's wrath. Grandma. Don't kill me. I left everything on. <laughs> Luca was alone. The house was empty. What? Well, just went straight to bed. The Luca was sitting by the pond listening to small waves lap against a rock. His father sat in a folding chair in front of him. Without turning, he spoke. Why don't you grab me some nice bait? Sure thing, Dad. Luca hopped over to the tackle box and popped open the lid. Inside was a rolling, buzzing mass. We're fishing with bees? Luca's father gave a warm chuckle. Well, you catch more fish with bees than honey. Pick us out a good one. Luca closed his eyes and plucked out a bee. He could feel its wings struggle between his finger and thumb. Holding it at arm's length, he hurried over. His father deftly baited the hook and examined his work. Interesting choice. With a practiced flick of the wrist, the line buzzed in a graceful arc. The water accepted it without a splash or ripple. The wrong choice. But I respect it. The pond began to freeze over. Sometimes we gotta make the wrong choice before we can make it right. Pallid ice propagated across the still surface with an alarming speed. Luca scrambled back as the ground beneath him turned cold. Dad, I don't understand. Sorry, kiddo. Understanding isn't always part of the deal. The relentless ice shot through the fishing line toward his father. Dad, look out! His father casually wound the reel. None of it's your fault, you know. Never was. Dad, we have to go. Luca grabbed his father's shoulders, trying to pull him away. Please, you, you have to run. The ice crackled as it spread across his father's hands. That's the thing about fishing, Luca. His chest began to crystallize. You toss your hook in, and you never know what you're gonna pull out. A shock of searing cold ran up Luca's arms. He gave one last desperate tug. The chair tipped backwards in a single frozen mass. Luca tried to stop the momentum. But it was too late. He watched the icy form of his father slam into the hard ground, shattering into a thousand pieces that crowded around his feet. Dad, I don't understand. What does all this mean? The gentle rustle of leaves was the only reply. Well, where's Grandma? We gotta be walking this town at night. His eyes struggled to focus on the walkie-talkie. Faintly, he could hear Rollo amongst the noise. Rollo's voice was coming through more clearly now. Suspicious. But why would Hyena Man lie? He wasn't in but on it. Some words were still just static. Them. The signal went silent. Luca held still, waiting for a response, his pounding heartbeat marking the passage of time. Lolo's voice began to fade. In the treehouse. The signal died for good.
Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and sprinted to the treehouse. Is everybody in town gonna be like fucking missing or something? <laughs> Check back here before that. I do like the art Luca though. Heard a group of footsteps the little cutouts where the, the background is a mixture of the sky. It's a nice little atmosphere and look you need. She dashed behind the bushes to avoid being spotted. Mr. Tolliver paused, shifting his eyes to one side. The rules. Is this gonna be like bait or they're helpful but they look evil? Uh, 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 uh. Mr. Tolliver took one long, quiet breath. <laughs> Operation Spark Blow. I'm sure the death of this Valentine person or the death of somebody or other is important. Especially with the goop being people back, but I mean that couldn't be motivated for just the about three anybody. Shared a determined look. This is funny. The noisy reporter, man. <laughs> you did an end well for that. to the truth. Fucking slides away. I change the sign. Two boys shared a mischievous grin. Mm, pranking. I'm guessing the festival sign. This says festival. Maybe it's the one above it. Tape. Hey, you never know. So 
of paper. Property rights. Then Luca likes to sing her on the line. Sometimes the best stuff is at the bottom of. Note in there, dude. It's not even booze. What is that back there? Was that there before? Coat's not there anymore. Moved up. The ball. Luca could only see a cloaked shape behind the rocket. Oh, that's Iggy just half fucked. He strained to hear as a muffled voice began. <laughs> Fear gripped Luca's throat. <laughs> Luca stared at the ground for a moment, trying to place the dampened voice. The figure shifted slowly from behind the rocket, revealing itself to Luca. Well, I guess that's where the, uh, the thing went. <laughs> Luca reached over empathetically. Iggy's tone jolted to dejected anger. Luca slumped to the ground, overwhelmed by guilt. It's not really his fault. Motherfucker's a brat. company walkie-talkie and headed for the window. Luca and Iggy climbed up the back of the treehouse to its roof, uh -huh. where Rolo had constructed his MCDC, the Mission that. Control Defense Cannon. 
From behind the crowd of clipboards, William Kerr strode forward, a warm smile on his face. Never trust a hate of him. Kerr's smile faltered. Lucas' grip tightened on the MCDC. Exactly is grandma and them doing? What do you do really when nothing no hope? <laughs> at all. <laughs> we'll reconvene after the festival ends. Iggy wiped his cheeks with a sleeve. What are you gonna do, Luca? He drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. Fucky swung the mission control defense cannon around, aiming Plunger. it confidently at the smirking face of William Kerr. Luca summoned his most insolent demeanor. <laughs> what the fuck? Now they're just gonna climb up. Kerr turned his back on the two boys with a nonchalant wave of the hand. As the clipboards began to slowly advance on the treehouse, Luca looked to Iggy with resignation in his eyes. The end. That escalated quickly. Maybe discretion what? Let's put a pin in this. I can struggle up uh, the warehouse. Try tickling. Maybe he wouldn't get us caught. Well, if he never changes, time to bust out the tickles. Mm. Beck lunged forward and began to tickle under Tish's arms. Mm. 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 Oh, yeah. Tears began to form in Tish's oh, eyes yeah. as she yeah. gasped for <laughs> breath between gales of laughter. Mm. 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 Beck redoubled her efforts until Tish finally had had enough. <laughs> Iggy's eyes darted around, a realization dawning on his face that he was now outnumbered. <laughs> Iggy kicked at the puddle before making his escape. shook the ooze out of her hair as best as she could. Now you got a gray hair. <laughs> Chapter Fucking four. Gray hair. Wouldn't that guy's boots be fucked too? The best policy. Or is it not a, is it only fact like organic? Luca paused for a moment, catching his breath. He'd only just met Beck. And somehow he already managed to drag her into this mess. Hopefully he could make it up to her. But finding Rolla was his primary concern. Well, they shouldn't be looking for anybody now. Oh. Roxy and Fitz looked drained. It was clear they'd spent all day searching. <laughs> Roxy's temper could often be dismissed as the impatience of an older sibling, but this was the most intense Luca had ever seen her. Her eyes were wild and unfocused, looking straight through Luca. 
In a torrent of rambled words and tears, Luca broke down. Fucking squirrel chicken. Roxy, still wow. exhausted and angry, Just softened wow. briefly as her eyes hunted the ground in thought. With a determined sigh, she looked up at Luca. Roxy drew herself up. And Roxy is the most useful person here. Grandma's got her, like, fucking conspiracy crew, but they're just taking forever to do shit. Roxy tried to think of the safest place to send Luca. Luca wiped his cheeks and gave a quick nod. Uh, you should tell her about the fucking, like, crazy goop and not to punch him. Is she gonna just push her in, dude? Looking into the puddle, Roxy rubbed her arms to warm up. Why didn't you tell her about the puddle? Well, her dad's been acting weird. When was her dad again? Mr. Nuncree jumped with a start. Spell. Luca motioned to the phone booth. It never rings, huh? The guy in the fucking outfit, maybe? I mean, he was fine. Mr. Nuncree gently placed one of his substantial hands on Luca's shoulder. Luca peered up at Mr. Nuncreed. Kind eyes warmed a stern face. There was a deeper emotion hiding beneath it all. It was subtle, but Luca could sense something eating away at him. Damn. There was a shame lurking behind those eyes. Is this just like what he interprets it as? Or are we actually like informing his emotions here? <laughs> I did choices? that if Mr. Nuncreed was that worried about Rollo, maybe he could help. I don't think that's the case at all. Mr. Nuncreed raised an eyebrow. Oh yeah, of course. I always get fucked by it. That's real. build the day. Wouldn't mind as much if I didn't waste the first like five hours of my day waiting. Well, luckily this game's of a, a length I got time. Mr. 
Mr. Nuncreed's shoulders slumped. A deep sigh bellowed from his chest. Luca attempted to take a step back, but Nuncreed's hand clamped down on his shoulder. With a firm shove, Nuncreed manhandled Luca into the phone booth. Maybe the secret of the fertilizers. There might be a lot of things. I mean, the secret of the fertilizer could be the chemicals and shit. The door latched shut with a mechanical hiss. Oh, As Luca pounded the glass, the floor dropped from under his feet. The inside of the phone booth was now a loose capsule plummeting at gravity's whim. Luca winced and pressed his hands to the walls. As he braced for impact, the capsule hurried to a surprisingly smooth stop. He felt a cold the rush umbrella of air facility down here. and opened his eyes with hesitance. Two large figures in hazmat suits occluded his view. Luca heard the deep, resigned voice of Mr. Nuncreed over an intercom. He knows too much. The end. Wait. No, this isn't the end. I know there's still much more. Somehow this went wrong. Okay, let's try something else. Struggle against them. This is a story about struggle. Luca could hear a machine humming somewhere nearby. He felt around wildly, searching for something, anything that could help. His hands found a hard object, maybe a tile? He yanked it free, lifting the cold stone. Let Luca swung the tile as hard as he could at the shape that still held fast to his leg. He heard the crack of glass as the stone hit the assailant's mask. I like how you don't know if you're going back on one of these. With a muffled yelp, <clears throat> the hand let go. Luca was free and scrambled to the door. He never looked back once on the long run home. Chapter 3. Everything's fine. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. Oh, well, he made it home, but that's not going to be good. Mr. Nuncreed man, that's the guy. Gotta save him for last, of course. Through the Valentines. Wonder if she was actually young at some point. Now she looks old. Anybody who looks young or old could be not. I suppose. I'd be scared shitless if I was a kid and the fucking, like, there was a fucking dude, man. I was about to fucking kidnap, man. Luca checked the soles of his sandals. Yeah. All of the animal, all the insects are disappearing. That's weird.
This is like a lot of shitty, uh... <laughs> oh, what was that game? <laughs> I've had so many games I'm trying to remember today. What was that other one that was about a bunch of angsty, degenerate teenagers in a small town that tries to have like a paranormal twist at the end of it, but it's usually just focused on like kind of crappy drama? Yeah. Where you play as like a somewhat fat cat chick. <laughs> what was it? That one was pretty, pretty whatever, man. This is a much better pace, thriller, night in the woods, yeah. I mean, I guess that one wasn't as focused on the thriller parts, but it was much drier in its presentation. You kind of just had to like walk back through the entire town every time. <clears throat> I don't think it weaved in the thriller parts very well with the rest of Valentine, it. Oldest of Sharper Valentine's children and heir to the Valentine fortune had a way of making questions seem like it's another demands. small town. Something weird's going on thing. But I mean, I guess there's a lot of those. Good, good setup. Mr. Wilder had learned to assume that if he was hearing from Eris, it was because she had taken issue with something he had put in the paper. his gaze and began to polish his monocle. They're pretty obsessed, aren't they? was meticulously shining apples. More accurately, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining one apple. With a yelp, Mr. Tolliver fumbled the apple, flailing at the air as it fell. Uh, 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 uh. He leaned forward and lowered his voice. Uh, 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 uh. Is there something in the jam? A message? loud enough for anyone to hear. Jesus, yeah, I don't think these people are evil. Maybe not. These two are bad at this dude. You know, <laughs> They're doing something. He reached forward and snapped up the jars of jam, giving Luca a little wink. He leaned in for a final whisper. Super suspicious. Of course. With a wink, maybe. Working for someone different. Maybe one's a spy and one's not. And maybe they're working together somehow. Who knows, man? The conspiracy. Maybe he's gonna 
it was worth when the chips are down eventually. Or maybe the opposite. <laughs> of cherry pie and a coffee man. She leaned forward and pinched Lucas cheek. Why is he everywhere? Where is he? <clears throat> He's always here wherever I go. Frequence dreams too, but yeah, I think he watches that one. Maybe you're being stalked. Maybe he's omnipresent. She's been turned into a fucking skeleton, and she's old. Lucas shifted the basket That's uncomfortably. Different. Didn't the grandma just come in? Surely he's met his grandma, the though. That's really good. Lifted cloth and inspected the jam. She carefully lifted out her jars of jam. She's much better at this conspiracy thing. Doesn't even seem suspicious. Lucas squinted at the faded photo of him and his mom at the diner. Memories of that day came flooding back. Sandwich with bacon. What the? He's gonna make the food and everything. Damn, he's good. The love me tender. Who's this? Oh, we met Gadzoo. Oh, no, that's not his name. <laughs> Jeff slapped the table and gave Luca Jeff. a toothy grin. Sweet burger with grilled cactus. And there's just some candy and cactus, but it's not really a burger, but... Luca glanced at the empty seat across from Gus. Damn, that's not here. Damn. Yeah. Cold cuts off of the pile of sloppy jelly. The 
fuck are these people eating? Dude? Okay, so you keep coming back to fish and you keep coming back to take orders for everybody. I see. That's cool. I assume we're not going to be able to finish these until like the very end, but... I kind of like the memories of his family, or this like recurring little thing you can kind of do. But also how like the branches of the story, like... Do some crazy conspiracy shit, or somebody will be missing, but then on this side they're like fine, and then we're kind of like using the knowledge we have to kind of add suspense. I mean, I guess technically you might not know this part. But... Yeah, that's a cool deal though. Yeah, it's been a good game so far. Pretty tight little narrative branch thing going on. Just enough exploration now. I keep uh, engaged in that front too. Yeah, it's been good so far. I like that uh, while it looked like it was like more of like a fairy tale fun cutesy thing, um, that it gets pretty heavy duty, which is cool. It looked like it would just be like, oh, maybe they'd go on like a, like an E.T. adventure, kind of like, you know, like barely any seriousness. I like the contrast a bit more. Always like small town with like some kind of slowly building conspiracy or mystery. Though. Although you've already got a lot of people, you know, are evil in this. A lot of parallels and hints and a lot of this random dialogue too. No spoilers. No spoilers. No fucking spoilers, Jace. Be fucking son of a bitch. One of the objectives were, but I guess it kind of shows you you forgot the events. <laughs> Says all the these avid VTuber watchers. I don't have my VTuber rig on right now. It's a secret. <laughs> a lot of people just use VTuber rigs, I think. <sighs> At least on Twitch. The ones on Twitch aren't really like managed, man. Right? I mean, there's just a bunch of people using rigs. Hell, I'm a VTuber enjoyer. I watched Cactus's VTuber <laughs> streams, dude. VTuber. I gotta find my, my rig, man. Where is it? And I think for a lot of people, the VTuber rig were just kind of a way to kind of have a persona or have yourself out there without actually having to have yourself completely. Sometimes he's got a VTuber rig. I don't know, I, I kind of personally separate them from like the big ones for me. On YouTube, 
I have a very different atmosphere and, and goal, it feels like. But I don't know, I don't know that much about the, the breadth of it all. I can't find a good rig, dude. Do we should again. Presents Beacon Pines, dude. <sighs> Just rig it and you <laughs> be sick, dude. Damn good. AC. The stream. Mr. Nuncreed eyed Luca for a moment. Then nodded in agreement. Then Creed snatched the basket from Luca. Uh -huh. That's kind of pushy, man. He's also a kidnapper and a murderer, probably. My bad, son. Saved. That's her mother. Beck locked eyes with Luca. The look on her face was equal parts expectant and desperate. Oh, he's good, man. Smoothly followed along here. Beck gave Luca a quick nudge. Oh, they're both her parent. parents. One of them works for the Valentines and one of them works for the... The fucking crazy umbrella corporation. <laughs> That'd be pretty hard considering this place is a fucking loony bin. She's good. <laughs> My guy's a pushover. Well, we had to meet our guy at the, the fucking treehouse. Maybe we can invite him too. We can have two friends. Next to that big mansion, looks like a like a gardener's house. What about the tree house? Shit. Luca tied a shoestring. What fish? I just want to leave, brother. Oh. Oh, 
Unless we're having dinner. Yeah, the structure of this is very, uh, very VN, but where you have to actually find the, the unlocks to the branches. I guess it's a little closer. I want to say, I want to say 13 Sentinels, but where you're like hard locked out of stuff until you do other stuff and then you can go back to the earlier branch. Well, I guess there's a lot of VNs that do that, yeah. DLR, get like that. It's like pretty classic VN structure, but since you actually explore it, it feels a little different. Since there's exploration in there. This guy's pretty down, but he didn't seem as down uh, back when he was a kid. Is he a miner? No, he looks like a mechanic. Jeff dug through his pockets. He's seen better times, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's how that uh, tiny can game was, dude. Well, I'd say these are closer to banjo. And you can do it. Yeah, like this voice sounds kind of Animal Crossing. Saving the full explanation for that, man. Sure, we'll find out the all the origins on all of it. What happened? Their work. Beck took a long breath. Then gave a firm nod. Chapter 4 All we need now is some kind of meta awareness of all the different branches and we're full on high five yet. Dinner with the Moodwills. Ilona Moodwill was worried about change. A gardener at heart. The she English is fine, so. Relied on it and it's even. only the narrator, otherwise it's banjo kazooie noises. But there was a difference between the controlled world of her plants and this cluttered cottage in a this strange town. This is the, town. the it's okay hands. Yeah. Easy. Easy, easy, lad. Easy. <laughs> Let you down easy like in that fucking gift, dude. Almost done. Nellie was a blur of activity, digging through boxes. Sorry, love. Couldn't find the dishes. We'll have to make do with paper plates. Dinner went by without much conversation. As she watched Beck and Luca finish up their pizza, Ilona let herself relax into the chair. The things she cared about were still here. Nellie finally had the job of her dreams. Beck was beginning to take root. Ilona's task was simply to tend to them. She could do that. Tend. Can I read the page before this? I would like a back one. Ominous. Your job to like use them as experiments. <clears throat> yeah, it is a bit, but I'm, I'm glad it's not fully voiced. It would ruin the atmosphere they got going on. Oh, he died 
that in the the super harvest thing. Luca's eyes were fixed to his plate, pushing a chunk of pineapple around with his finger. Nelly was the one who eventually broke the silence. I forgot Eliza even had a VA. <laughs> yeah, it was. Oh, no, I remember now. Yeah, I remember the the younger business guy. I remember his voice. No, that it was good. Yeah, it's good that I didn't remember it super well because that means it wasn't bad. And I like the game, so that means it was probably good VA. Ilona nervously gestured toward the boxes. Massive collared. Yeah, he was great too. No, that's probably why, right? Yeah, one of his better, maybe just because the dialogue was better, one of one of his better roles. Yeah, yeah. Not huge in a great tune, but I've also only really experienced great tune and mostly shit stuff like AI. It's definitely not on the VA as much as it is the work. Luca wiped his face with his sleeve. Beck gave Luca a swift kick under the table. Oh, no work. they're working on uh that was pretty ominous narration before though she probably has a pretty good idea we'll see though luca glanced over to back she seemed to be holding her breath she intended. Luca glanced outside to gauge the time. The sky was darker than he expected, filled with ominous clouds. I'll ask if she wants to come along. Luca wiped his mouth one last time with his napkin and started to get up. could be prickly That's around new people, but out. Beck seemed cool. Rolla would warm up to her eventually, probably. Luca began to respond, Myth but the too. sky answered for him <laughs> as the clouds mm, above be. began to Pretty rumble good. with ominous Solid. thunder. So far. Nice kind of like mystery, thriller. It looks cutesy, but it's actually pretty... A little bit darker. Luca surveyed the roiling clouds. At that moment, the heavens opened up, unleashing torrential rain. This doesn't got a via and format. Before you catch corn. I need someone to stream this. Come on, please. I know the feeling. Plenty of you. Luca 
Focus squinted into the eye hole of the microscope. Luca adjusted the slide with his fingers to get a better look. Forty-seven days. Luca wiped his hand off on his sweater and gave a nervous laugh. Beck looked down, timidly tapping the ladder with her feet. That's going to be fun. Luca bent down to examine the bouquet of wilting flowers. Judging by the odor, they were well past their prime. Pungent. He open the attached card. Is they move on. Fucking trying to show off and got like your fucking kneecaps explode. Beck took a moment to watch the rivulets of water running down the window. Luca took a deep breath, exhaling slowly. For this joke, it might be that she's an expert. <laughs> Who knows? We'll see how crazy this game wants to be. I mean, we've already got the Umbrella Corp, bodies, hyper aging, kidnapping, missing parents, conspiracies, the corporation. Who knows? Beck gave Luca a light thump on the arm before heading in. Mm. Chapter 5 Friendly Feud The air was heavy with a hard rain's residue, the smell of wet things. Friendly Feud Despite his dreary surroundings, Luca felt at peace. He'd never shared those details about his dad with anyone, not even Rolla. But it's not like this changed anything. Rolla was still his best friend. Adding Beck to the group would help balance things out. Everything's better in threes. This is what Luca told himself as he headed to the treehouse. We gotta get some fucking kid drama. I'd rather not. Oh, hey, it's the cool 
bat chick. The peculiar last will and testament. A kid Ari's who just showed up to town one night with a lawyer. Okay, so did the guy not die? Did he like de age himself into a kid or something for some reason? Or did he have like a kid? Like an illegitimate kid? How would he de age himself and just like cause mischief though? I mean. It could be like an illegitimate kid. That would make more sense, but. I don't know, man, with the aging shit, it could be anything, man. But all we've seen that the goop does is hyper-age you and then kill you or something, <laughs> I guess. At least with the... Maybe it doesn't kill you, I mean, it could live, but... I guess it, you, get, you go young when you go old or something. Here. I mean, this is the arc where he escaped the kidnap from. He doesn't have anything to say about that. This is no time for fractured friendship. Yeah. Contentious relationship with time. And they're really digging into it now. I can see himself de aging. Oh, um. well, that might just be how he did the fertilizer chemistry. Luca had only ever heard him speak in this stiff yet gentle tone a few times, and it always meant one thing. scoffed. Lucas stumbled on his words, knowing he'd said too much. Why is this guy such a loser, man? Playing your stories, what is this fucking... Self-conscious here, man.
Luca became instinctively angry in response. Both boys were now shouting across the distance. Rolo's tone changed to a calm, yet more intense anger. The words hung in the cold night air. Rolo's stomach dropped, knowing he'd crossed a line, but it was too late. Luca dug through his old stuff, He's a brat. not even sure what he was looking for. His grandma never comes up here to sleep. Does she even fall asleep down there? Is she out doing conspiracy shit? Gran cooed gently from the hallway. Luca just wanted to be alone. Nice enough, though. He waited to hear the sound of the front door closing. for this beating the shit out of his ball probably not Luca dozed off again himself to go out uh, besides if he ran into most Rolo, of the choices are turning points not action situation oh, kick this up there The Adventures of Hank Atomic. Luca carefully opened the cover and began to read. Rollo had received it for his birthday, a special hardcover edition with behind the scenes commentary and bonus art. Rollo cherished it, but asked that Luca keep it at his house. Luca wasn't sure if it was because Rollo didn't trust himself with it, didn't trust his sister around it, or just wanted an excuse to come hang out at Luca's more often. Whatever the reason, Luca didn't mind, but it had stayed right there where Rollo had stashed it ever since. Now, at the foot of his bed, Luca lost himself in the pages. He'd read it all before, but at this moment, it somehow felt sentimental. He was well into issue number five when he heard soft footsteps from the hallway. Without realizing it, Luca had pouted away the entire afternoon. He once again felt the weight of it all and allowed his weary eyes to close. Luca stood in a vast black expanse. This kid's not gonna eat all day, man. He looked up at his father standing beside him. Walt was working a straw at the bottom Walt. of a fountain glass, trying to collect the last bits of milkshake. Dad, where are we? Taking a final loud gurgling sip. 
His father peered up from the glass. He jangled the straw playfully with a warm smile, then lifted the empty glass as if to point into the darkness. The source? Luca's eyes followed his father's gesture. In an instant, he was sitting in front of a blazing campfire. Across from him sat a large figure in a yellow hazmat suit. The figure's voice was a scratchy echo. Well, if it isn't the man of the hour, make yourself comfortable. Luca held his shivering hands over the flame to warm himself. It doesn't work that way here. Their yellow gloved hand pointed to the base of the flame. It's a cold flame. See? Luca peered at the base of the fire. It wasn't wood that was burning. It was Beacon Pines itself. Tiny buildings freezing and crumbling as they were consumed by flame. Luca could see small shadows moving in the burning city. People. Luca leapt to his feet. We've got to help them! The figure gave a dismissive wave of their hand. Why waste energy helping people who can't even help themselves? The figure bent down to examine the panicked crowd as they desperately tried to stop the flames. They only care about what's right in front of them. Not like us. Luca's voice was a trembling whisper. Us? The figure slowly stood up, grabbing its helmet with both hands with a jolt and a twist. The suit emitted a gasp. A cloud of torpid mist escaped slowly revealing the face within. Luca's own face looked back at him, older, worn, distant. The sensation was oh, oddly familiar, as if he'd caught his own reflection by surprise in the mirror. The doppelganger smiled. I tried to help once. He gestured towards his face. And all it got me was this. Luca staggered back. You aren't me. Luca felt a hand catch his shoulder. His father was there again, beside him. Every choice sets us on a path. This is the end of one of your paths, son. Luca watched his older self shake its head ruefully, its face twisting into a cruel grin. Well, dad. If you wanted him to see this, far be it from me to disappoint. Luca watched in shock as the figure took a confident step forward and plunged into the flames in a flash of cold light. He was gone. What does all of this mean? Luca felt a reassuring squeeze on his shoulder. Just remember why we choose matters just as much as what we choose. Luca woke up to see a hazy figure. Well, they keep bringing up the choices. I feel design. like it's probably got some kind of meta thing going on, like like a sci-fi beyond. Luca rubbed his eyes. The kind, concerned face of his gran came into focus. <coughs> gran silenced Luca with a gentle pat on the leg. Just a bunch of brats. <coughs> A reluctant nod. A corn dog. Oh, grandma seems nice. Everything's better with corn dog? Yeah, except your heart. A fucking <laughs> diet. An early death, man. <laughs> I'm eating the only thing. I'm eating only corn dog. I'm playing Beacon Pines. That's good. It's an interesting little kind of small town, kind of dark thriller, mystery, drama thing. A little surreal here and there. Oh, grandma. Luca took a deep breath. He's got some kind of conspiracy Chapter going six. on, but I don't, I don't. It doesn't seem like a bad one. Through thick and thin. Despite Luca's bitterness, Gran was right. He needed to hash things out with Rollo. A big fight changes the nature of a friendship. Whether, in the end, it is for the better or for the worse, all comes down to understanding. If one is not careful, the same familiarity that builds the strongest of bonds can become the wrecking ball that shatters them.
Luca emerged from seclusion, taking in the crisp festival air, but the events of the day weren't on his mind. He had to find Rolla. There's a lot of uh, branches here. Got rumble. There's three. Break. Ooh. Keep going on the rumble path. shaking her head. Luca looked down and kicked at the dirt. Yeah, his sister's pretty big. wonder if she turned into a fucking zombie in that other route. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. She didn't touch it, but... Probably the library, bro. Somewhere quiet. There's comics about Atomic Egg. There's no critters in town. They're all disappearing. especially Mr. Kirk pointed to his grinning mouth this guy's evil Drones and there's a lot of them. Jeff was staring into the distance with a wistful look. <laughs> Jeff turned to Luca with a furrowed brow, then gave an understanding nod. <laughs> For a moment, the two now shared that same wistful gaze. Jeff. What's this? Oh, the studying chair. Safety suit. Enemy of my enemy. Safety suit. Suspicious. Maybe it's that yellow suit. I mean, we know who was behind the particular yellow suit in the beginning, but. Let's 
super secret guest of honor. Hmm, mysterious. Well, I guess we just can't go in there, whatever. Not like I've got anything new. Yeah, I assume our guy's at the library, but I want to see if there's any words hiding around. Incorporated. Thanks, kid. Everything in this town is handed and in, handled internally. Well, I guess if I worry about any kind of a uh, plot hole, we can just say that. We all know Beacon Pines is a great town. What you may not know is... There's some big conspiracy then. <laughs> Outside influence isn't a problem. I guess we'll just go ahead and meet him. Them, it's like oh, it's in this fucking library. And the issues of the comics are up here. Luca grabbed the adventures of Hank. Luca grabbed the adventure. Said issue was like a newspaper. Cutter removed his book from the desk and replaced it with Luca's, turning on the lamp. As he slid the book under the purple light, two words glowed. Well, we got a whole thing the Adventures here. of Hank Atomic, issue five. Luca clicked his tongue with recognition. Flipping through the pages, stopping when he hit a glowing word. He continued flipping. They might change this fucking uh, sweater at the beginning, and now we've been rolling it the whole time. I wonder if I go back to the beginning and wear the different sweater if it changes it, turn up the whole story again. Reaching the end of the book, Kato looked up. The <laughs> grub card. We'll probably end up taking a break within 30 minutes or so to go get some food with my brother. We'll finish up the 
finish up when I get back. And after Griffin, then we go up to the, the restaurant. Before Luca could finish his sentence, Griffin handed him a corn dog. Luca shrugged, taking a sizable bite out of the corn dog. Luca tongued at his cheeks, feeling something rough between his paper. teeth. He reached into his mouth and pulled out a slip of paper. He shook off the bits of corn dog to read the slip. Luca finished off the remainder of the corn dog. <laughs> okay, because I thought when they mentioned Griffin, I was like, who's Griffin? I was like, I don't know who that is. Or they mentioned in somebody that he used to know as like some kind of conspiracy thing. Like, the actors are, they're breaking their head. I watched too many movies and shit, man. We're not going that far. Maybe. There's just a long chain here. Lumi waved his hands around sarcastically as he began. Hard in the muscles. Takes flight but has no wings. Comfy late in music. I have no idea, but I'm just going to go to the treehouse. Let me actually go see why there's no dialogue. That was just the. This rocket, but no, it's not. Luca looked up at the satellite dish. Rollo nearly killed himself putting that up into the tree. Oh, yeah, I never Rollo actually didn't walked turn out the radio here. into an interstellar communicator, as he'd hoped. It did at least boost the signal enough to overhear truckers one town over. Now we've got that. Takes flight but has no wings. Awesome. Just roll back in here. Nothing in here though. I don't see why it would be the Valentine's place. Handed Luca the balloons. 
classic kids having a dumb fight makeup. And then a conspiracy. Cozy town to somber. Luca threw himself at Rollo, hugging him as tightly as he could. Not the balloons. <coughs> oh, brother. <here. coughs> Some info about the mom. Oh, the HQ. I shoot at that guy, nothing alright. Oh, cool, now we're back to the town music. I guess it's like a mix. Alrighty, well, my brother's here, so this is a good time. They've all, they've kissed and made up here. Oh, man, you just exit and it's, it's off, man. I just thought they were gonna like ask if I wanted to save or not. Let me load back in. I'm curious. Here. Am I gonna get like fucked? Or is it just pop me right back in? No, oh, I'm just right back in. Oh, cool. Anyways, folks, I'll take a little break. It's been good so far. I like it. I think the story's been pretty engaging. Nice little mix of classic kind of drama with um, a bit more of a. <clears throat> Small town conspiracy thriller thing going on. There's enough mystery I feel like crumbled in there that it could be meta, it could be um on level of supernatural. They've left it open enough with the breadcrumbs and shit. Blech. Yeah. Uh, maybe I've read too many sci fi VNs, but I I enjoy actually the you know, that you run around to find your choices and then that might let you a branch back at places you might not have expected. I mean, so far you pretty much play linearly, but it's cool. Yeah, it's been good so far. We'll finish up when we get back. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Tomorrow, you're not going to come back for this. I'm hoping. <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> we'll see though.